everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you five haunted houses from Mississippi. Number one, Linden Bed and Breakfast. This stately antebellum home and inn was built in 1785 and is said to be quite haunted. Guests of the Bed and Breakfast have reported seeing a phantom horse-drawn carriage pulling into and parking in the drive. Many claim to hear a cane tapping the floor throughout the inn, especially in the West Gallery. The apparition of a man donning a top hat has popped up in guest rooms more than once, and there has been many sightings of a woman who jumps from the roof only to disappear before hitting the ground. One guest even captured the voice of a male spirit during their stay. Number 2. The Duff Green Mansion this lavish home was built in 1856 by Duff Green for his wife Mary and focused on their love of entertaining and soon became a hot spot for extravagant parties. But soon the Civil War was upon them and the house was unfortunately located right where the North and South would soon meet in battle. Seeing their glorious home struck five times by cannon fire, Duff offered their home for use as a Union hospital. Wounded soldiers from both sides were treated here, the Union soldiers on the top floor and the Confederate soldiers on the main level. The property was then leased to the government as a soldier's home where the wounded would remain to recuperate from their injuries. In 1866, the Greens were finally able to return to their beloved home. Upon their return, they found bloodstains ground into their beautiful flooring and one of the cannonballs was still wedged in a ceiling beam. Today, bloodstains and cannonballs aren't the only hints of the home's past. Apparently, there are many spectral residents ready to remind the living of their history as well. The mistress of the home, Mary, likes to pop in and check on things, and is often seen walking through rooms or down the hall wearing a classy green summer dress with long flowing hair before slowly dissipating. You may also encounter Annie, their five-year-old daughter who died of yellow fever, roaming the halls in search of her parents. In the kitchen, you might spot the ghost of a Confederate soldier, since it was used as an operating room during the war. The Dixie Room is said to be the favorite, well, haunt of a Confederate soldier who is missing one leg that is frequently spotted sitting in front of the fire, rocking the night away. So, while you're here, don't worry about that noise you heard. It wasn't just in your head. Number 3. Bellevue, the Longfellow Place This estate's lengthy history includes time spent as a family residence and slave trading headquarters, getaway resort, and even a girls' school. Local lore states that Longfellow stayed as a guest of the hotel, and it was here he was inspired to write the building of the ship. But it seems history proves this inaccurate as he was never known to travel further south than Virginia while writing, but the moniker persists. The home was built back around 1850 by a wealthy slave trader named Daniel Graham. As one could only imagine, this meant many suffered greatly in these halls. Legend tells the mistress of the house was especially cruel to the slaves and would often beat them to within an inch of their lives. And, perhaps gratefully, many did eventually succumb to their injuries. Tragically, it seems, many of the tortured slaves still linger, and one can only hope they had the chance to torture the slave trader and his evil mistress from the other side. Today, it seems the hauntings consist mainly of ghostly mischief in the form of slamming doors, smashing glass, and the occasional object being chopped through the air. A more disturbing sighting is that of a baby being dropped from a third-story window, only to disappear before it hits the ground, which has surely given witnesses quite a scare. Number 4. Waverly Plantation the Waverly Plantation, in all its splendid glory, was built in 1852 by George Young for his wife Lucy and their ten children. Sadly, though, Lucy was never able to enjoy her beautiful home as she passed away that same year. When the Civil War erupted, all six of their sons served the Confederacy, and one bravely gave his life, not in battle, but in a Union prison camp. 
Before his capture, he had been shot in the leg and severely wounded, and thanks to poor and likely non-existent medical care while in captivity, he contracted gangrene. During the war, the house was likely used as a hospital for Confederate officers and sometimes a place for wounded soldiers to recuperate from their wounds. And also during this time, a young girl named Susan Hamilton passed away in the home as well. As the family aged and time passed, the last of the family moved as they could no longer afford the upkeep, and the house was left abandoned in 1913. For the next 50 years, the house would remain uninhabited and nature took full advantage. Vines winded up the once grand double staircase, and a huge hive of bees took up residence in the once magnificent rotunda. Throughout these 50 years, there were many reports of neighbors hearing loud 1800s era music emanating from the house, along with the sounds of partygoers thoroughly enjoying themselves, all while the house sat empty. Of course, as with many eerie old houses, rumors of the haunting were rampant, and it became a local hangout for partying college kids. Thankfully, the house was bought in 1962 by Robert and Donna Snow, who lovingly restored the home to its former glory, adding many wonderful antiques they had collected throughout the years, along with some of the young family's original belongings that were donated by descendants. They ran the mansion as a house museum, while also calling it home. And over the years, there have been many ghostly happenings. There have been numerous sightings of a small four-year-old girl spirit, likely Susan Hamilton's, with dark blonde hair, wearing a high-necked white gown, wandering about trying to find her mama, or sometimes playing on the once again grand double staircases. It seems she's also fond of laying in the bed, leaving her body's tiny impression as she rests. Another spirit that is also seen frequently, and frankly seems a lot creepier, is that of a Confederate soldier, likely the son who died in the war's ghost, that enjoys making his appearance behind guests who are looking into a full-length mirror from that time period. Aside from the apparitions, objects are said to move by themselves. Loud crashes are heard, but nothing is found amiss and doors are heard slamming shut, only to find them all standing wide open. The historic home was sold to a new family in 2016, and they not only plan to keep the house strictly a museum while living in a place they built on the grounds, but also rebuilt the many structures that made up the whole of the Waverly Plantation. Oh, and by the way, George himself is said to appear as a phantom rider on the grounds often stopping to walk through the family cemetery located on site. Number 5. Cedar Grove Inn This beautiful manor is steeped in history and tragedy as well. The house dates to around the 1840s and was a wedding gift from John Klein to his young bride Elizabeth. Together they had ten children, four of which passed away way too soon. Two infants were lost to what was probably sudden infant crib death, and a young daughter was taken by an unnamed childhood illness, and lastly a teenage son died from a tragic accident. As he was on the stairs outside, he accidentally dropped his gun, and it discharged, shooting him fatally in the back. As the Civil War came, John went to fight for the Confederacy, and Elizabeth was home and quite pregnant. But, interestingly enough, she was the niece of the Union's General Sherman, who moved her to safety and turned their home into a Union hospital. All was safe and relatively unscathed, save the cannonball that is wedged into a wall still to this day. In 1919, the home was sold and the new owners began renovations, including moving three graves from the property to a nearby cemetery. And everyone knows disturbing a grave tends to stir things up. Guests and staff of the restaurant and inn have reported many supernatural occurrences, as it seems the Klein family is still in residence, even after death. Not to mention the many lives lost during its time as a hospital during the Civil War, who have been spotted wandering the halls and grounds, and sometimes the soldiers can be heard in conversation, or sadly moaning in agony from their deadly wounds. 
people often hear the phantom cries of the infants that pass there and glimpse the spirits of the young girl and older boy who were lost as well. According to housekeeping, it seems the little girl is quite fond of laying in the freshly made bed of the room where she died, and sometimes is seen on the stairs looking sad and lost, probably not aware of what has happened to her. The older boy can be spotted, but then will disappear. But his footsteps can be heard on the steps outside where the tragic accident took his life. Phantom giggling and crying are also quite common. Elizabeth's spirit is often seen walking down the front staircase and moving through the house going about her day as she always did. The smell of pipe smoke near the gentleman's parlor is said to be John Klein's way of showing he isn't fond of someone who's in his space. In closing, we hope you enjoyed today's stories. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget to check out our podcast. Bye!